What is going on guys? So today I'm going to be doing a video much like the how to make a professional photo shoot. Today's video is going to be how to make a professional video shoot. Now some things are actually transferable for that video and I do recommend that for certain parts to go and check that out. Um, I'm not going to be really repeating myself so anything that is relevant to this that's also relevant to the how to make a photo shoot video I will just recommend you guys go and check that out as well. So the first thing that is actually quite different to the how to make a professional photo shoot video is actually the, the type of camera you have is slightly more important in this case. Now I don't mean that it has to be like a professional recording camera, it can still be a DSLR, it can still be a mirrorless camera, it can still be a compact camera. It's about the functionality that they have. They need to be able to change the exposure settings and by that they need to be able to change the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO. Much like in photography, uh, exposure and these three settings are very important. However, they are used in slightly different ways. As for the aperture, it still has the same meaning as it does in the photography video. So go check that out. But in a long and short of it, uh, it's currently running at 1.8, meaning that it's a blurry background. It's letting in a lot of light. If it was on something like F8, for example, it would be letting in a lot less light. It would be a lot darker. And the, black cr and the background would also be in focus as well as my face. But moving on to the shutter speed. Now, the shutter speed is where it's actually kind of important. Um, so the shutter speed and frame rate are actually locked. So if you don't know what frame rate is, um, it's it's basically how many times, how many photos are being taken per second, essentially. So at the moment, I'm recording at 1080p, 30 FPS. Don't worry about resolution, but I'm actually going to be uh, recording this at 30 FPS. This means that every second, 30 photos are taken. Now, if I was to have it of something like 1080p, 60, the movement would look a lot more fluid, a lot more kind of like uh, a lot more fluent, but it isn't always ideal for different types of things. So we're going to be talking more about frame rate later, but for now, I need to explain what frame rate, depending on what frame rate you use, will depend on the shutter speed that you use. So being that I'm recording at 30 frames per second means that I have a shutter speed of 1 60th. This means that I have essentially doubled the shutter speed equivalent to my frame rate. So if you record at 30 frames per second, you want to be using uh, 60 a 1 60th. If you're recording at 60 frames per second, you want to do 120. If you're doing 25 frames per second or 24 frames per second, you want to do 1 50th. Um, and that's the general rule of thumb that you want to be doing. Uh, it's usually like double. So as I said, whatever your frame rate is, you double that for your shutter speed. And the reason for this is that this is to do with movement. So if I'm moving at 1 60th, this is a quite a natural movement. It's you know, it looks good. It doesn't look kind of like choppy. It doesn't look unnatural. Um, but if I was to, let me put it on 30. It's a lot more, and now bearing in mind that it's actually quite dark. So let me slow down the light in here. If I move, there's a lot more motion blur and it looks a lot less natural. Now, there are times where actually you might want to have the shutter speed different, but as a general rule of thumb, for the majority of things that you're doing, you're going to want to have your shutter speed double of what your frame rate is. So if I just put that, so that's what it's like there. If I go too high, then it's a little kind of like choppy. It's you know, it's, it looks like very high speed. It's essentially what they would use in say, maybe like a uh, like for a slow-mo type thing. You kind of have this type of movement, but that's obviously not what we're going for. We're going for 1 60th of a second, uh, and that's kind of the most natural looking move. And the same thing goes for 60 frames per second or 24 frames per second. There are going to be times where you will need to change the shutter speed for a different type of look. Like there are certain movies that actually use this effect um, to their advantage, and it can look really, really cool in like things like fight scenes. But in my, in like general video rule, like things like talking, feels like normal moving, things like TV, the majority of time they are recorded at 1 60th or whatever the double of the frame rate is. Now, being that that was not the best explanation in the world, and it was kind of a long explanation, I would suggest you go checking out the link in the description. Um, this article actually does describe it a lot better than what I can, and it does go into some more detail about how it works. Now, before we move on to talking a little bit more about frame rate, we need to talk about ISO. So ISO, again, I did explain this in the photography video, but a brief rundown is it's essentially digital lighting, it's digital exposure, it's fake, it's just cranking up the brightness and the contrast up and up and up 
until it looks good to watch. Now, a general rule of thumb, same as last time, is that you tr want to try and make sure you don't adjust the ISO until last. So once you've set your aperture, once you've set your shutter speed, you want to make sure that you adjust your ISO accordingly. So right now, I'm filming at 1 60th on shutter speed and f1.8. This means that the highest my ISO needs to be is 400. The idea is that you want to make sure you can keep your ISO as low as possible. So, as I said, a general rule of thumb is set your, set your shutter speed first, set your aperture first, because they are most likely the two important things that you're going to need, because with aperture, you might want to have a blurred background. You actually might want to have a blurred background on a scene. You might want to focus on one particular item. So here we have like a bottle of water. So if I wanted to just focus on that, having it on 1.8 allows it to focus on that. You might want to focus it on one particular object or one particular person. Well, as if you're on something like F8 or or even higher, you might want to focus an entire scene, like a landscape. Um, and that's why you need to make sure you keep the shutter speed and the aperture done first, and then you set your ISO accordingly. Much like in uh, photo, by cranking up the ISO, you are introducing noise. And this isn't great because, especially in video, you're going to notice it. If I was to crank the ISO up way, 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 way high, maybe because I've set the aperture to something like f8, you're going to get, you're going to get, as I said, noise. And it doesn't look pleasant. It doesn't look very good. It really does take away from the image. A lot of detail is lost. Um, so your goal is to try and incorporate um the best lighting you can in that situation sometimes you can avoid it sometimes you do need to crank the iso up a little bit maybe a little bit out of your comfort zone but the idea is to try and make sure you can keep it as low as you possibly can now as for fps i did give a brief explanation just a second ago um and it is essentially just how many photos are there are per second um now there are going to be different use cases use cases for different uh, frame rates. So a typical rule of thumb is that most TVs, uh, TV shows are usually things like pre-recorded shows are usually 30, uh, 30 FPS. Um, and then things like sports. So like football, rugby, anything like that are usually 60 FPS or higher. And the reason why they might be higher is because for things like replay, so they might actually be recording them at something like 120 FPS, but you'll see you, most TVs, do not actually support 120 FPS. They then downscale it to a 60 FPS output. And what that allows them to do is essentially slow it down without it beginning to look choppy. And that's what the good thing about sports. Things like high motion, you want to make sure you're recording it at 60 frames per second. Um, sometimes a lot of movies are actually recorded at 60 frames per second, but you only see them at a lower frame rate. This allows them to essentially slow things down and make it look smoother and then just change the frame rate in the end. And a general rule of thumb as well is that movies are usually around 24 or less frames a second. As I mentioned before, this does not mean that they are filmed at this frame a second. But as a general rule of thumb, um, most movies you watch are actually going to be in 24 frames a second. Uh, most non-action scenes are going to be shot in 24 frames a second. All it essentially allows is it, it just allows things to look more cinematic, more maybe, a, if anything, a little bit more realistic. Um, our eyes actually see 24 frames per second as more of a realistic. Now, if I was to cut this to 24 frames per second right now, which obviously I can't, um, it would look a bit more choppy and it maybe your eyes would take a while to get used to it. But in the end, it would look more natural. Now, I'm not going to be explaining too much about what our eyes see and all of that thing. Um, again, there'll be a list of things in the description if you like want to check these things out in more detail um, but essentially these are the, they are the three main things that you're going to be doing while videoing now the next thing that is actually quite important um, and people don't really think about it um, and that is going to be positioning now i'm not going to be talking about techniques i'm not going to be talking about bird's eye view or like worm's eye view for things like that that's something that you guys are gonna you guys are gonna learn on your own but what's important is about positioning the camera in such a way that it lets enough light in while capturing the right subject. Now, I did mention this before in the photo, in the photography one, but it's slightly different for video. Now, if I was recording right now, recording a video, as I mentioned in the photography video, ideally, it would be good to make sure I am in a place right now where the most light is coming through on me, but while not necessarily washing out the background and making the background dark. So an example of that would be right now, I'm able to record and you can see me pretty well and you can also see the background pretty well. 
and there's enough light, it's not grainy, it's not nothing like that. However, if I was to switch over to here, so if I just move this over here, so being that I have switched over here now, um, you might notice a few things that are different. I am more in focus and the background is a lot more, is a lot darker. Now, while this is good, while I am overall better well lit than I was over there, there is some downsides to this. As I mentioned before, I've had to actually lower the aperture quite a bit. It's now an f4.5, so more of the background is actually in focus, which isn't really good for this type of video. Ideally, I would like to be sitting over there where I can have the aperture at 1.8, have the background blurred, have me more in focus. Um, and obviously, I can't change the shutter speed right now, and the ISO is as low as it will go. And this is what I mean about positioning. Your lighting and your exposure settings will change based on where the camera is pointing. So if there is light coming from behind the camera, which a lot of the time there will be, it will essentially allow you to control the exposure a lot easier. And you need to be able to see where light sources are and try to place your camera accordingly. Now, sometimes this does mean you might not be able to necessarily get the shot that you particularly want, but you will definitely get a lot better quality video when doing things like that. Now, obviously you can buy things such as softbox lights and so on like that. So this actually brings us on to our next point. And this is actually going to be uh, additional equipment apart from the camera. Now, people think that recording a video is as simple as just putting a camera down and recording. But it's not quite. If you want to do as best of a video you can while you're at home, you need a few other things. Now, I'm not saying that you should go and spend thousands and thousands of pounds on things like studio grade equipment, because the idea is you want to be able to do it from home, but it also doesn't come entirely free. Now, as for the photography one, I did mention that you could use things like make your own diffusion, make your own softbox lights with things like bet sheets and a lamp. But for video, I don't think it would be quite as good and you would probably need to buy yourself something like a cheap ring light. You can get them for under £100. They're not going to be anything like studio grade quality, but you will definitely get a lot of good things out of them. Now, one more thing to do with making a professional video is going to be things like tripods, it's going to be things like gimbals, and it's also going to be things like audio. Now, as for gimbals, I would not recommend that you go out and buy one unless you are looking to film a lot of cinematic shots, a lot of things where you're panning and moving, because they are actually quite expensive. Um, you need to get one that works with your specific camera. There's not, I mean, you can get things like gimbals for phones. Um, obviously, I wouldn't recommend using a phone because you can't really control uh, ISO on things like uh, the iPhone unless you have an external app for things like Lightroom. However, that doesn't really work for video. I'm sure there is a video app, but you know, if you are going to be using something like this, this is a Canon G7X. Um, I'm sure there is a way to gimbal this, uh, but I really wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend going for something more like a tripod. So I actually have a tripod right now. It's actually on one of my tripods. I'm currently using the Joby Gorillapod. And while it is not the cheapest uh, tripod around, it's actually very, very good. You'll see people like Casey Neinstadt using them all the time for vlogging cameras. And the good thing about these things are is that they're incredibly flexible. You can literally put them anywhere. Like right now, I can't show you guys what it is right now, but right now it's currently just standing there and the legs are kind of like bent a little bit. So it's at the right angle, it's at the right height. You can wrap it around things. And that's something that's quite useful, especially at home, because you don't, you're not, you know, you're working with, maybe you don't have a big home and you need space. You might have a little table. Something like this is really, really, really good. One other type of tripod, and probably the, when I say tripod, the one that you guys will think of, is your stand, bog standard tripod. Now, this is your bog standard tripod. Now, I've had this one for a long time. I've had this for many, many years. Um, and it's actually kind of starting to break a little bit. But I've had it, I reckon, about, well, I'm 18 now. So, I probably had it for about seven years i believe i forget since it was about 10 or 11 so about seven or eight years um but it's really really good it allows you to mount your camera on top and what this allows you to do is it means that you don't have to have someone operating the camera necessarily you can set your lighting and then you can just hit record and you can just go you can stay there up like that it's height adjustable obviously it's quite big you can get ones in all different sizes much like the joby one um, and this is quite good if you have got that little bit of extra space i would recommend picking one of these up as well as a joby um that way you can just 
stand them up and then you can just point and shoot wherever you like and you can even do some panning with this i mean it's, a, it's a, the way it's got it's pretty tight right now because it's been doing up but if you loosen these a little bit if you loosen uh like things like that you can just you can pan gently if you if you've got like a soft enough movement you can pan it pretty well but yeah i would definitely grab a tripod really 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 useful i mean i can't think of a situation where if you were planning to make things like home videos or youtube videos where a tripod wouldn't be useful very very good things and then lastly on equipment list is actually going to be audio now i'm not saying that you should go out and buy an expensive lapel mic or one of these you know this equipment you know this microphone here costs nearly 200 pounds you don't need to go and do that while this is entry level for studio grade you don't need anything like that to make good videos of good audio now you might be wondering why why would i need to go and buy a microphone and that's because generally microphones on cameras are pretty awful like if i were to switch to the audio on this camera actually i'm going to switch to the audio on this camera right now so this is audio coming through the g7x it sounds god awful this is this is exactly what i mean it is it's not good it's nowhere near as clear as using something like the spark because i'll switch back to the spark now um but you can pick up pretty inexpensive microphones that obviously while well, they might not sound as good as something like my my microphone here they're going to sound a lot better than what the onboard audio is on the camera so something like this the rode video mic go now this is oh, i don't i don't know how long i've had this but this is probably the go-to for a lot of streamers uh, for not a lot of streamers for a lot of vloggers it's really good if you're on the go um it's not the best microphone in the world but i you will get a lot of better audio uh, than something like the g7x now one thing to note that not all cameras have audio uh input jacks so most dslr video cameras will have them um i don't know if many compacts have them my g7x doesn't actually have one but i'm kind of lucky that if i am outside and i am vlogging the audio is not too bad on this but when you're in an indoor environment or you're trying to record like a uh, dialogue I would definitely recommend either picking up like an external microphone collection, like a set, something like connected to a laptop or whatever, or if you do have a camera that supports uh, an audio jack like the Nikon D5300, the my DSLR camera, I'm not using it right now, um, pick up one of these. You can also get the Rode VideoMic Pro. It is slightly more expensive, um, but you will going to get a significant improvement in audio. It does require battery power, but that's fine. Batteries are fairly inexpensive nowadays um there are things like lavalier mics that you can get you can get some fairly cheap ones I, as i said i'm not recommending that you guys go and spend hundreds of pounds or dollars or whatever on these expensive microphones because while yes they're going to sound good for most people's use they're not going to get the benefit out of them they probably might not know how to use them they're quite complicated to use there's going to be dealing with things like bitrate and so on and if people that don't know how to do it and they just literally want to make a video that's interesting you don't need anything professional grade and last but not least the only other tip that i can give you is practice as with the photography one you just need to practice 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 you cannot just get better you know like that you know i can give you all the advice in the world you can buy all the equipment you want in the world you can read all the things that i'm putting in the description but it does not mean that you're going to be uh the next steven spielberg you know you're not going to be the next world-class director or have the best video knowledge ever all you need to do is just continuously practicing i'm not saying that you should just go out and record like a full-length movie that you're going to just try to sell don't do that what you need to do is you just need to practice 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 i'm still learning i am by far not a professional uh, i'm not I'm not claiming that everything I said in this video is 100% accurate. I'm claiming that from my own, uh, from my own experience, from, from making videos for all the amount of years I have using cameras and everything, what I have learned, and I want to share that with you guys. Um, I'm not expecting everyone to take everything from what I've said. Uh, if I can just give some sort of useful information out there for someone, then I'll be happy. I know this video is kind of long. I wanted to go in as much detail as I could. Um, 
I've tried to cover everything that I can. If I have missed anything, I am really, really sorry. Definitely be sure to leave a comment below if you do have any other tips or tricks or you want to correct me on where I'm wrong or anything like that. Um, it is simply about just practicing, 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 knowing your exposure, learning about your particular camera. You don't need a red 8K camera to make good videos. It's not just about that. It's about lighting. It's about audio. You know, usually you can have a video with the best quality in the world but if the audio is poor no one's going to want to watch it so it's about finding the balance between a good video quality and good audio quality well guys if you did find this video helpful definitely be sure to rate comment and subscribe below sorry for the long video once again i've tried to kind of cut things out where necessary um but i do hope you guys have found this helpful even enjoyable um i hope you've learned a few a, few, a thing or two i mean i've actually learned a few things because i had to do some research before this video but anyways guys i'll see you in another video peace out